Hey guys, David Glenn for davidglennrecording.com, themixacademy.com, and theproaudiophiles.com. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about tightening up your kick drums. I've got a uh, kind of a pop EDM-inspired song, not quite an EDM song, but uh, kind of some EDM elements in a pop song from the artist Pablo, uh, local to me in Orlando, Florida. Uh, he's doing some awesome stuff. This album is is yet to be released, so excited to be able to use this in a tutorial. Produced by our good friend Victor Encarnacion out of Chicago. And uh, we're going to look at this mix I did last year, maybe 10 months ago, where um, I'm listening back now, and I feel like the low end could be tighter in the kick drum. The kick drum is what dominates the low end in this song. So I'm going to show you a couple techniques, some things to think about. I'm going to hit play, and then we'll work through it. So here we go. Okay, cool. This is a quick snippet there. So I dig it. I like what I did. Um, but I felt like, again, the low end, whenever I zoom in and focus on what's going down in the sub region, anything from like 100 and below, 72 and below, um, that it could be tighter. And how I found that was I pulled in a reference track, which I did not do originally. And I, um, I've got this song. It's called Amazing Life from Brit Nicole, mixed by F. Reed Shipping. Give a shout out to him been pulling in a lot of his work uh, to reference mixes a lot of genres so it's cool to get a take and uh, and check out other people's mixes but um, let me hit uh, play and show you a technique that I use some of you guys may have seen me do this but I'm going to come down here on my master fader and I've got a uh, fat filter pro q2 you could use any EQ all I'm doing is cutting out all the highs got a high cut filter about 100 you'll see me uh, move this around let's go out here to F. Reed Shippen's mix, and we're going to listen to just the low end. So you want to open it up. Cool. So I just want to focus on things that are, you know, 120 or below, where that kick is living, the bass, any of that kind of stuff. So I've got that on my master fader, both my mix and his uh, mix, the reference track, they're both going out to that monitor, uh, LNR. And let's take a listen to my low end, just somewhere in here. Back to his. Okay, so now listening, I really dig how his is tight, it's punchy, and the kick serves the purpose to drive the beat and uh, hold things together. It's not washy, it's not, you know, it doesn't have that soft, sustaining uh, dominance down there. It's nice, it's tight, it's punchy, and I feel like our tracks are similar enough to where I could go for that effect and it could serve the song better than this, again, my sustaining low end. Okay, cool. There's a couple ways to address this. One, I could go in with an EQ and look for any of those um, sub frequencies that are sustaining too much. I could remove them. Not really what I want in this case, but that could work. Something I'm going to do is uh, in this first video, maybe we'll do a two part series. We'll make this first video showing you how I've treated it with um, Isotope Alloys multi band transient designer and then just gating it. And we'll compare that. And then the second one I'll show you since this is going a little long how to split your tracks and treat them a little bit differently. So first things first, let's hear this kick before my transient designer. Once again, here it is. This is before, and we're just listening to the low end right now. And now let's listen to F. Reed Shippen's. Cool. And again, I just feel like a tighter kick will serve the groove and the vibe of this song better than what I've got there. So first thing you look whenever I instantiate this, I've got, I'm boosting the attack in the sub region, 120 the lows, anywhere from 120 and below. I'm boosting the attack and cutting the sustain. And then I'm um, only using this second band here, the clickiness is kind of in that 2K. Uh, I'm boosting the mids a little bit, the attack and uh, cutting sustain as well. So not quite a gate at all, but control. Think of it more as controlling those frequency ranges independent of each other. 
and uh, I, maybe I didn't want as much attack, so I can just boost a little bit of attack in the mid range as opposed to boosting a ton like I did in the sub. So let's hear a before and after of that on the kick. Let's see if we've made an improvement. Once again, before. Right, so you can feel it kind of suck in, tighten up, and uh, we're just controlling it a little bit. That's what you heard when I hit play, and I still feel like that low end can be a little bit tighter. Once again, listen to F-Reed Shippens. Just got that punch, that articulation that I really want from this kick drum. So while that's cool, and that helped me get a little bit further to my destination, Next up, I'm going to try just a simple gate, but I'm going to put the gate at the end of my processing. See, a lot of times, and what I used to do, is I would um, gate the kick at the beginning, which still could be cool, but then whenever I start boosting low end or EQing or adding harmonic saturation or anything, I would get some of that sustain back, which you may or may not want. In this case, uh, I don't want it. I want it to be a little tighter, but I don't want to miss out on all of that processing that I've done with the EQ, in that case, nothing too much, but the Helios, I've boosted some frequencies and I've done some work to it, and I don't wanna miss out on that. So I'm gonna gate it at the end of my processing. So now I've got the kick tone that I like and the character that I like, and now I'm gonna control it, tighten it up, and see what this sounds like. So here is the kick drum before and after the gate. Here are the gate settings, and I'm just really clamping down on this guy, trying to get it to be tight and fit better within the rhythm of the song to drive and be punchy. So here we go, before and after. Oh, that's the reference, here's ours. Cool, so we're really sucking it drive. We're tightening it up, we're probably losing a little bit. We got low end, maybe that we can EQ back in if we want just a hair, a little bit of trial and error involved. But take a look at those settings, look at the gate, and uh, dial in your threshold, get your release tightened up, not too much hold, hitting it really quickly with the attack so that we grab it. And uh, let's hear it in the context of the mix. Let's bypass the gate. And you know what? Let's uh, come back over and hear the reference. And here's ours before and after. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so we've tightened up the low end. Now let's take a look without this high cut filter, low pass on. Let's get rid of that guy and let's hear it and see if we've made an improvement to the overall vibe of the song. Back out here. Here's before. Pretty cool, so it's different. Tastefully, you may like the thumpier, more pillowy type sustain from the kick originally, but I think that uh, a lot of you guys are gonna dig that tighter, punchier kick, being a little bit more articulate and uh, driving the track instead of that motion that we're getting from the other kick, so um, I'm losing it. So moving on, part two, I'm gonna talk to you about how you can split the kick into three frequency ranges. If you don't have the multiband transient designer, I check. I definitely recommend you check it out. Isotope Alloy 2. But if you don't have that, I'm going to show you how I can separate it and do it a little bit differently. Moving on, part two. Here we go. Thanks again, guys.